This is KVU News Nightbeat. Chaos across the sea. An attempted coup in Turkey led by the military. People rising up to fight off the violence. And in France, people still recovering in Nice after a man drove a truck through a crowd of people. Plus, then and now, activists from the civil rights movement compare it to the Black Lives Matter movement. Good evening, I'm Tina Shively. Terry Gruca is off tonight. Our top story at 10, a country across the sea under siege tonight. A military coup in Turkey taking over Istanbul and the capital of Ankara. There are reports of at least 42 people dead in that capital city tonight. Turkey's president urging his pro-government supporters to mass in the streets and fill the squares. He says the coup was unsuccessful and that 130 people have already been arrested. Uh, I hope there will be stability and, and peace and continuity within, uh, uh, within Turkey. Uh, but I have nothing to add with respect to what has transpired at this moment. The U.S. Embassy there warning Americans to shelter in place and stay indoors after martial law and a curfew was imposed. That situation is still developing there tonight. And in France, their prime minister calling the man who drove a truck through a crowd of people a terrorist linked to radical Islam. Prosecutors, though, saying Mohamed Boulel wasn't known to intelligence services and was not on a watch list. That attack, killing 84 people and wounding dozens more in Nice on Bastille Day. President Barack Obama offering his condolences to France today in a press conference. Two of the victims in that attack were from right here in central Texas. And tonight, friends and family members continue to mourn their loss. Sean Copeland and his son Brody were in Nice to celebrate a birthday. Sean worked for Lexmark, a software company. His staff still trying to wrap their minds around what happened. Little Brody was just 11 years old, but full of many talents. He loved theater and baseball. His coach described what it was like the moment he heard about that tragedy. I didn't know what to think. I was in complete shock and just the, the thought of uh, how close to home it hits and um, just sad and then, and then having to tell my son what happened and uh, very, very difficult. The Copeland family released a statement to KVU tonight saying in part, quote, our lives along with so many others in France have been changed forever. The overwhelming support we've received from friends and strangers has been comforting and we deeply appreciate your condolences and prayers. Tonight, hundreds showed up at the state capitol here in Austin for a Black Lives Matter rally. Recent officer-involved shootings in Louisiana and Minnesota have sparked protests nationwide, but what's the next step? The Night Beats' Brandon Jones is live at the state capitol. And Brandon, you spoke to people that say this should be more than just a movement, right? Yeah, that's right, Tina. You know, this rally tonight was youth driven. There were people from all races here. And some that I talked to say that the real change will come when people elect those who serve their community needs. So tonight I had a chance to speak with activists from the 50s and 60s and those who are doing the work right now. A life of service, that's how you can describe Wilhelmina Delco. Delco spent 20 years serving in the Texas legislature, and she was the first African American elected to the school board in Travis County. But my election was two days after Martin Luther King was assassinated. To say that Delco has seen hurt and frustration in America is an understatement. But what she's seen right now with the recent movements like Black Lives Matter has her asking what will happen when the crowds disappear. The civil rights movement was about crime. It wasn't about death. It was about participation. Delco believes the key to making social movements successful lies in voting. And you can have all the demonstrations you want, but if the people who are in those offices don't recognize the legitimacy of your campaign, you're talking to each other. Davon Hardeman with Black Lives Matter agrees. Friday, the group held a rally at the state capitol. Voting is a big thing in the community, and that's why, that's why I want to get people out here. And if I can get you out here for this event, I can get you to go vote. Hardeman feels it's millennials that will continue the fight for social justice, but they both hope that the fight will soon come to an end. Now, several rallies are planned in Austin in the coming weeks, including a forum with police chief Art Acevedo. We are live here at the state capitol tonight. Brandon Jones, KVU News, Nightbeat.
All right, Brandon, thank you. Alton Sterling was laid to rest today. He's the man shot to death in Baton Rouge last week. The 37-year-old was selling CDs outside a convenience store when he was approached by police. Cell phone video shows officers struggling with him before that shooting. Reverends Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson were among the notable people at today's service. An Austin police officer has been suspended for two weeks following an incident involving a robbery back in January. According to the disciplinary memo, Officer Stephen Martinez drove the wrong way on I-35 for miles while pursuing another car. Officer Martinez also drove 79 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour residential area. The memo also states Officer Martinez has been disciplined before. And the way we end out the work week is the way we started with triple digit heat. And in fact, uh, with today, the high temperature of 101, five days in a row here in Austin. Hottest on the map, Lano at 102. All right, we're going to tally up another one here for 2016. We're now at eight. Look at 2014 and 2015. We're going to make a run at those numbers. Think 2013 might be a little bit of a stretch. But when we come back in a couple of minutes, we'll talk about the dust that's still over us, relentless heat, and also. 70 forecast has a little more pep in its step. You'll want to stick around for that. Tina? Looking forward to it, Jared. Thank you. Now, just days before the Republican convention begins, the GOP ticket has come together. Donald Trump made it official today, tweeting, I am pleased to announce that I have chosen Governor Mike Pence as my vice presidential running mate. Trump postponed the news conference to announce his vice presidential pick, citing the attack in France. He and Pence did meet today, however, in New York. Very, very humbled, very great. What are you going to be thinking about Mr. Trump about? Just uh, looking forward to meeting with Trump, so we're talking about our plans for tomorrow. On the other side of the aisle, Hillary Clinton is out auditioning a potential vice president of her own, Senator Tim Kaine from Virginia. Kaine first campaigned with Clinton back in late February, ahead of that Virginia primary. Governor Greg Abbott going to miss the Republican convention next week. He's back out of the hospital tonight. The governor was being treated for burns on his feet at Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio. Naturalization applications are up by the thousands, and the reasons experts are citing for the increase. And keep walking the latest gaming craze to take over your smartphone can also help out your favorite charity.